All right, so just got off work. Uh, plan on ordering the tour converter uh, tomorrow, which tomorrow's Friday. So I don't know when this video will be posted, but hopefully I have it ordered by then. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put the transmission in here because I need to build a transmission mount. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt it up and kind of get an idea of where the mount will be. But also once the mount is in and the transmission's bolted up, I can actually measure for the drive shaft. And whenever I measure for that, I can actually go ahead and take it off the RV, have it shortened, and... By the time it gets back, I should have the torque converter in and the uh, transmission bolted in. So hopefully I can do that. Yeah. So anyways, I'm going to mess with that, get this thing unloaded. Uh, I did mess with the paint a little bit. So since the bus is yellow, I figured we're going to make the transmission and engine yellow too. Kind of. So that is bolted up. Now I only got these bolts in there just to hold it, but I'm gonna be able to work on that transmission mount. And as far as the driveline angle, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's pretty steep. So you got this one that's at the top of the frame here. And that one is probably eight to 10 inches below the frame. It's not ideal. Okay, so I got the transmission bolted into this, uh, well, this is going to be a transmission support, but I do need to drill some holes in there, use half-inch bolts, and the uh, only reason why I'm not doing it yet is because I forgot my tape at work, so I want to get it true, and uh, once that's bolted up, then I'll be able to take this transmission back out. Put the torque converter in it whenever I get it, and it's going to be in for good. As long as it works. So, I've shifted through the gears and all that, and uh, tried turning it with my hand and whatnot. It seemed to work out okay. So, yeah, that's as far as I'm about to get right now. <clears throat>
All right, so I went ahead and took this intake off because I'm putting a different intake on it. But the reason I did that <coughs> is because I need to figure out what type of intake this had, whether it was square pour or oval pour or anything like that, because I don't want to buy one and then it not fit. So that's why I took it off. I needed to know which one I had. All right, so last night, uh, today's Tuesday, so yesterday after work, I uh, went down to Oklahoma, saw a good friend, uh, Larry, and he had some old big block Chevy parts that he's had sitting around for a bit, and I was in need of some big block Chevy parts. And uh, I initially went down there for an intake and valve covers, and I got a little bit more and i'll be able to use it so i'll go ahead and show you guys those i'll show you the headers here so uh these were actually for sale down there in claremore uh, dad wouldn't pick them up went down there yesterday and got this stuff along with those headers now here's the intake it's going to be a dart intake uh, the only thing that's different about this is this is the uh, rectangle port not the oval port that is out there on the bus, but I can still put the square port gaskets and be okay, I can run this. It's not an issue at all. Uh, let's see, you got a fuel cell. It's either eight or a 10 gallon, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I did get the drive line out of the camper, but this one will actually be a little bit better to uh, cut because I don't have the carrier bearing in the center. This is just a one-piece drive shaft, so I can actually get that shortened. That'll be a lot better. These are the valve covers. Got some old Moroso valve covers. And even got a four-core radiator that has an electric fan with it. There is a dash panel behind there. And then here's a steering column. I was planning on taking the steering column out of the RV. But he had this thing sitting around, and I am in love with this steering wheel. That is just kick-ass. So uh, I'll get that mounted up, get it connected to the shaft coming off the gearbox there, and I'll be able to mount up the power steering pump onto the bus engine, and I'll just have some hoses made and run them down to the gearbox. That way I have power steering. So that'll be sweet. Uh, Real quick, very excited about these parts, very appreciative of getting these parts. Uh, they will be used so right now though i'm gonna go ahead and change the valve covers get that sealed up and then uh, tomorrow i'll mount this intake along with the distributor i went and got some wires and some plugs go and put the engine at tdc uh, get the distributor lined up throw the plugs the wires everything on there get the fuel pump mounted up and i will get the starter bolted up so uh just looking, I got some guy coming to buy some headers today. So, but uh, anyway, so I'm gonna mess with that crap, get that all put together, and that's about it. So we ran into an issue here. Uh, I went and put plugs in it real quick, but uh, uh, valve covers look amazing. Now we're running into a problem with this intake. After looking at it and everything, this intake is for a tall block Chevy and I have a short block. So what that means is the actual deck height of the engine block is shorter as where this intake is supposed to be on a tall deck, uh, big block. So I'm actually not gonna be able to use this intake. Um, big bummer, but you know, I don't, uh, I don't know. 
But uh, I will be looking to see if I can't find something. And <clears throat> uh, go from there. But as far as that, like that should have been something that uh, I should have looked at that and whatnot. But I didn't know the difference. You guys are going to learn. I'm not experienced whenever it comes to some of this crap. I just kind of go as I go. And I didn't know about that. So what better way to learn than experience it? But uh, not too big of a deal. I'll go ahead and find a um, short deck and take. Put that on. And... Uh, get this thing running so uh, anyway so i'm gonna be on the lookout for one of them and that's about as far as i'm gonna get today um, but the valve covers look amazing i like the way they look so, anyways i'll be back tomorrow okay so here's these headers i'm gonna show you what i'm doing here so what i actually end up doing was cutting that collector off of these pipes it used to be like that okay so instead of one pipe coming out as a uh, three three and a half inch collector i'm not too sure i made uh, four pipes come out so these are inch and three quarter pipe i went and ordered some pipe actually and i got these elbows so the idea with these elbows is you got the header here but now we're going to come out on eight different elbows. So of course you're going to have four per side and whatnot. But what I need to do is actually straighten these up because they had to be bent to fit into the collector and so on and so on. So <clears throat> what's going to happen is this one will actually come out right there. The next one will have a pipe that comes up here and it'll come up about right here. So all of this stuff is going to be a, in stages to where uh, that way they're all offset and you can actually fit the elbows in. So that's what the idea of this is. And I'm going to bend these back. All right. So I just got off work. Um, back here at the house. Take this intake. Right here. Um, what I'm working on is the uh, bolts for the motor mounts. I got to change those because I just put something in there to hold the engine up. So I just ran some bolts I had sitting there and I just ran it through the mount just so I could hold that up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. That's pretty stout. I'll have to do that here in a sec. But uh, uh, valve covers, I actually had to order more of these so they'll be in at some point. Get those bolted down. Still on the lookout for an intake. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to fix the motor mounts, put the fuel pump on. Uh, I am going to turn that bolt around. That way it's a lot easier to pull out whenever I take this engine out. Let's hope I don't, but, uh, torque converter still in the works on it. Uh, I'll go ahead and mount the starter up, get that kind of put where it needs to be. And we'll just go from there. So, I mean, I'm just going to be putting small pieces on here today. Fuel pumps on. I'm gonna start trying to put these on. So what's gonna happen is uh, I'm just gonna put two or three bolts in this. All it's gonna be is enough to actually hold the uh, header on and I have to mock up the rest of the piping for it. But I just found out that 
these right here actually hit the spark plugs. So I'm going to have to cut the plug holes out here. Which is a massive bummer because I didn't really want to cut the damn things. But here we are. Yep. So. Alright. Plugs are out. Like I said, I'm just putting a couple bolts in here. Just enough to hold it. So, let me start on that. easy to get frustrated whenever you have a plan in your head and you're wanting to make it happen and just plan it and plan it and plan it and then when you finally get time and you finally get the parts to do it and it doesn't work out it irritates the piss out of me so evidently you can't flip big block Chevy headers upside down and mount them didn't know that so Awesome on that. Um, crap. Just gotta keep trucking. We'll change it as we go. Um, this is part of the frustration part of everything. So what's happening is you might be able to see it here. Let me see. So yeah, right here, you can actually see the spacing to the uh, exhaust here. And that spacing is a lot closer. So these are actually spread out more. So if I did want to bolt it up, these headers would be off the face of the exhaust, pour it on the head, and it's, it's not going to work. So the only way for me to be able to run the headers how I want to I would have to take this flange and just make an entire new flange. I'm not doing that crap. I don't I don't want to. It's just it's a pain. I'm sure a lot of guys it's real simple, but to me I just want to bolt these on, get this thing going. Um so instead I guess we're going to mount this exhaust underneath the bus. I didn't want to do that, but. So let me grab the other header and we will see how they look. Okay, so what's happening now is these headers are now going to be mounted under the frame. I'm just trying to adapt I mean, just to make this work because I'm having a very hard time filming today. I get frustrated way too easy. And whenever it's stuff like this, the pilly, small stuff, uh, it does bother me. Especially when I have my mind made up on what I'm doing. Like, I'm, I'm, I build this in my head and I try to apply it to it. And then. We're just going after one thing after another after another on um, what's going wrong. So the easiest way for me to do this is just to keep working on it instead of stepping away like I should. Because I feel defeated whenever I do walk away. Um, but now whenever I do get done with this, say we, uh, say we get close to mounting this header up. I get an idea where we're putting it. I, I will feel a little bit of accomplishment on what needs to happen. Uh, I'm underneath the bus right now, but as comfortable as it does look under here. Um, I'm going to show you what's going on under here. So I am going to mess with this real quick. This is the uh, oil filter housing, the block right here. This is actually an attachment that uh, has a piece of thread that you thread this into and then the oil filter goes on it. 
Now these are Allen bolts and I should be able to take those out, drop this uh, filter adapter. Well, it's not really an adapter and it's an extension because lines come off right here, go up to the oil cooler. I'm not running an oil cooler. So I'm gonna take this off, take a gander at it, see if I got the right bolts and whatnot and uh, go from there. That was neat. <laughs> Drop that and it uh, fell right down on you guys. So that was awesome. Uh, cracked my screen, but uh, here's what it is. So, anyways, that's the uh, oil filter cooler. Oil cooler housing, I guess, is what you call that. I'm just going to take a random guess at it. But uh, now there is another piece that I actually have to take off the other big block, bolt this in before I can actually um, put the filter in. So I will get that after a bit, but for right now, I'm gonna take a look at these headers. Okay, so here's what's going on. These will now come underneath the frame, which sucks because it's not level. So these are actually gonna have to angle down a little bit, do a little bit more pipe bending which i don't have a tube bender which kind of sucks but i do got a two by four and a lot of leverage so we make something work there there's the other one that's not actually bolted up all the way I'm hoping that i got enough room for my starter now that i'm looking at that because the header is pretty dang close to the oil pan and it actually is hitting the frame so i'm gonna have to cut a little bit out of the frame so, uh, as you can see, that uh, Bluetooth torque converter there. All right, uh, it's a new day. Got off work, uh, messed with my uh, headers a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna show you those, but a uh, lot better, a lot better mood after uh, seeing what they look like so far. So right now they're only about halfway done. And I had to kind of MacGyver them a little bit because I actually ordered inch and three quarter OD uh, exhaust pipe to fit over these headers, but they end up giving me ID. So um, don't judge my welds. So uh, nobody said that I was a mechanic or a welder. Actually, I never said that I was a mechanic or a welder. Like a guy that I know, I'll just, I'm just a goat herder. I herd goats for a living, we'll just say that. So, anyways, I will show you these headers. It is windier and crap outside, so if it's hard to hear, maybe it's a good thing. Nobody really wants to listen to what I gotta say about this thing anyways, so. Uh, so actually, this is gonna be the uh, passenger side. I will go ahead and show you these. So this is more explained on my staggering deal that I was talking about, so these pipes can be spread out uh, more the reason why they're not close together is because this pipe inch and three quarters is actually going to be turned into four or five inch pipe at the end of these so uh not not too bad for all you guys pausing it and zooming in on the welds you can't do that so look i know this is youtube it's not only fans so if you catch a little bit of side boob it's your own fault for looking wasn't on me I'm not going to intentionally show you, but if you see it, sorry about you. Man, I didn't get my, yeah, dude, I got my sock.
Okay, so I got the exhaust bolted on and damn. That looks freaking sick. I mean, that's just my opinion. You guys might think otherwise, but to actually see this thing with some exhaust on it is just, it's kick ass. So that is very, very sweet looking. Um, so here's the plan now is I got this exhaust sitting like that, but now this exhaust needs to come out like this. And then we're gonna go into some four to five inch right at the cap. So, but as far as that, I mean, that just looks freaking gnarly. All right. Uh, today is Friday and I'm working on the exhaust a little bit again. So, um, let me show what we got going on. All right, so what I plan on doing is going ahead and running these pipes out to the edge of the bus. So it's gonna cut off probably um, an inch past the body line is what we'll just kind of guesstimate here. Um, but, so like I said, these elbows and this pipe and all that, I was supposed to get OD pipe and they gave me inside diameter. So uh, about an 18 inch piece of inch and three quarter OD with this, I can actually save 30, 40 bucks because a um, inch and three quarter OD to inch and three quarter ID is um, like four ninety nine dollars a piece for a three inch piece. So I bought an 18 inch piece of pipe and I cut it up in two inch sections. So, uh, and that piece of pipe was $8.99. So I saved quite a bit of money there because I need eight pieces. So what I'm gonna do is slide that on and I'm gonna give her a small tack so I can hold that piece on. We're gonna do the all. safety squint style welding hood actually I'm gonna have to ground up I don't know how well this thing's gonna weld because I have three 50 foot extension cords and a 25 foot hooked together so I got 175 foot of extension cord to reach out here going to my little $120 Harbor Freight welder so we're gonna see if voltage drop actually exists here so uh, I'll hold this piece. Oh, yeah. I actually want this want a small tag. Oh, man, she's slow, though. She's spicy. Let's see if that's tight. Yeah, we're getting tight there. So now what I can do is take this pipe, get a rough idea of where she's going here. So we're gonna go right there. We're just gonna cut her right here. <clears throat> Alright, so I gotta have a little bit of a bend on that pipe, so what we're gonna do is stick her through here and my hitch. Give her a good old yank. Bend her in a couple places here. And uh that ain't gonna work. So with that, I actually bent this in my hitch. This pipe. I don't have a tube bender so this ought to be enough to hold it though just by tacking it and then I can always take her back off and put a good weld on her and, uh, this flux is only so good at 300 foot of cord <laughs>
right, so this pipe is uh, kind of tacked in there in place where it needs to be. I'll bring it up to the shop whenever I can weld it a little bit better. This flux gorge is not handling a 300 foot of extension cord. So what we're gonna do is uh, get the other side kind of where we want it, square it up. Once it is squared up, then we'll take these headers off. You can see them down there now. But uh, I'll take these headers off, go and bring them back up to the shop, weld them up, get them where they need to be, and go ahead and bolt them on for the final time. So that will be that plan. Um, I'm going to run up the road, order some pipe. I'm about 12 foot short, so I'll go order that, get it done, and it should be in either tomorrow or Monday. And if I can get that, that would be awesome because then I can take it up to the shop and finish it, like I said. But uh, bolt those on, and that will be half of the exhaust. I still have to run stacks up each one of those pipes, so I'll have eight stacks on it. But um, that's all I'm going to do to it right now because I actually have to go work on the bug, Sweet Serenity, because uh, it's going to prom tomorrow. So uh, my buddy Justin, his brother, Ben, uh, we've got to know each other pretty well over a little bit and uh i'm gonna let him hop in it and drive it into the entrance to prom so uh, his girlfriend is brave enough to hop in it and go so but anyway so that's as far as i'm gonna go until early next week um i'll keep you guys updated i appreciate you watching and i will see you guys in the next video